Right, here we have Longwood. The last time I came here, I did some really good videos of the wild garlic in full bloom, which was loved by many people. And I've come back not quite two months later. This was once a valley of white. See where it's all flattened? All this, these are the wild garlic. It's just all brown now, look, all the way up there. Now that was white. All this flattened stuff here, see? All this flattened stuff. was white. All down there, shh, white. I, sh I told you it was a small window to come and view that beauty. This place is still beautiful, mind. This place is still beautiful. But that's special. Look at it. It's like a flood has been and just drowned it all. I can remember how enthralled I was with the magnificence of that scene that day. I'd been here two weeks before that and the bluebells were out. But the white garlic weren't quite out so I had to come back. So in about two months, this is my third visit to Longwood. I like coming here all year round. It's got beauty all year round. But the crown is when the bluebells and the wild garlic are for me, the crown is then. And you've got to time it. You've got to time it to get it right. Same furry walls, look. Same furry walls. I presume that big log was there. I can't remember to it. I just think it's been there years. Unless it was sat on that wall, of course. But all this, you see, was white. It was just white. It was un unbelievable. It's such a magical place. So in many ways today, it was a better option to... come down through here and uh, have the coolness of the wood. Let's just take that off my head now for a minute. Have the coolness of the wood. I was talking earlier about the boys stuck in caves in Thailand. Well, under where I'm walking now, there's networks, tunnels, caverns, all part of the Cheddar Gorge area. They're dotted about these potholes. A lot of them are locked for safety reasons so that people don't go in there and get lost. So I'm going down towards a little bridge. And if you looked at both videos at the same time, if you could, you know, one side by side, you would see me walking this. And all this was just white. I'm still excited by it. It's weird to see it so flat as well, just to see what happens afterwards. Do you know what I mean? It just looks like a tidal wave has come and gone all over it. Of course, the stream tends to dry up a bit this time of year in this heat. And it was very busy when we... Uh, it was bubbling away when... Uh, it's trickling now. It's just trickling. Hardly a trickle, actually. Look, hardly a trickle. A little bit this side.
these are all in their element. All in their element. But I say that that was very really busy when I was when the wild garlic here. That was a bubbling brook going through there. I'm just going to turn off for a minute. Right, so the stream's totally dried up more or less. There's a little bit of water, which probably goes underground back there where the bridge was. Still some lovely looking toadstools hanging from the trees, or fungi of some sort. And of course, I've been bitten about six times. I forgot about the problem of the flies. So I have been attacked, yeah, I've been attacked quite a lot actually since I've come down here. So not to worry. No pain, no gain without pain. But it's still beautiful in its own way, look. And then in the winter when it's totally dead looking and bare. I can hear somebody coming. Hope they're friendly. I'm going to turn it off for a minute. Right, carrying on the video, just met two people. Had a bit of a joke about all these biting insects. Well, at least there's some water here for the deer, I suppose. It would be nice. Now, once again, that would have been covered in snow, uh, um, wild, wild white garlic. And uh, like I said, this flattening effect I've taken some photographs. I've taken some photos. I think it's recording. Yeah, so this is Sheila in Longwood. This is a continuation of another video. I turned off because I was passing somebody. I think I'm going to have to put the belt on another. I think I must have lost half a stone or something. Trace is starting to fall down. Even though there's no water running in the streams or anything, it still feels damp. Water has been stored somewhere, and of course underground there is also caverns. And that could be something to do with that pipe there, look. Could be something to do with an underground tunnel beneath our feet. Something to do, see it's going along there as well. Something to do with the potholers and all that. And I might, these trekking shoes don't like this sort of pathway. I don't like it, um, you know, because it's like I said, it's like being barefoot with these. They're very good though. I didn't like them when I first got them because I was used to thick walking boots. Um, which I must admit, the thick walking boots are good for this sort of thing. But these are like. Just a little bit of protection for your feet. Oh, I'm so thirsty. I'm hanging on though. I'm, I'm rationing myself. There we are. There's a pothole. Entrance to a large caving system, that is. Down there. Yep. I've met the potholders before now. They've... Uh, I had a chat with them and that. They've told me that some of the caverns down there you can get a double-decker bus in. 
they didn't say Jumbo Jet, but <sighs> apparently there are caves around the world that are big, like you could get a Jumbo Jet in. So I listened to this caving woman the other yesterday. It was a, on Radio 4, there was a program, and they were talking about the boys lost in the cave, you know, the little football team that have been are being rescued at the moment. And... Uh, she she was asked if she'd been to any of the Thailand ones. I think she'd visited not that particular system that they were in, but others. But she said um, there is a there is danger, and you should never take anything for granted. And you should always research well before you even attempt to go and do any caving. Um, it's all got to you know let people know and all that sort of thing. <sighs> But she said she's made discoveries. She's been the first one into a cave before now that someone's not done or gone along another tunnel that no one else had. She goes all over the world caving, but she's from Br Bristol. And she probably knows these caves down here and might have done some of her training. A lot of people come to Wookie Hole and Cheddar for their cave-in experiences. And... Uh, yeah, that was quite interesting to listen to her speak because it's, at the moment it's, it's, it's experts in caving and diving are at British. Um, we've um, got a lot of expertise in it and so we were the first on the scene for, to get in there and help some of the experts, the best people. And they're from the southwest uh, as well. They probably belong to the Wookiee Hole um, crew, who I bump into quite a lot when I'm out walking on the Mendips, um, over Pretty Way. Because <sighs> they're scattered around these potholes, you know. <sighs> oh yeah, you can still smell that garlic. I'm going to be covered in bites. This is going to be a real bite, what I call a terrible biting day. That was the only difference. Not coming down here. I forgot about all the insects. That was just waiting to get you. Um, I got bitten on the hand. I don't know if you can see there's a, like a, there's, they're around me. They're around me all the time, buzzing. And uh, oh, look at that scene now. Look at it. I like to video all of it, really. Those people are probably that I bumped into probably doing the hike round. They were talking about foreigners a minute ago, so maybe they're bringing groups of people out here. I mean, it is a nice place to bring people. A little adventure, not too much to start with. I haven't brought any of my grandchildren out here yet. They'll probably find me too slow, and or they won't want to walk here. I don't really know. All I know is you can't force people. I'm still videoing. I'm going to turn off now and take some photos.